Hello, my name is Shelta Shah and I am a third year GI fellow at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I'm happy to have the pleasure of presenting our systematic review and meta-analysis entitled, Mucosal Healing is Associated with Improved Long-Term Outcomes of Patients with Ulcerative Colitis. Until recently, the goal of UC therapy had been resolution of clinical symptoms, including resolution of rectal bleeding and normalization of bowel habits. However, there has now been a paradigm shift such that the goal is to also treat to more objective measures, such as mucosal healing, in addition to these clinical symptoms. It's unclear, though, whether achieving mucosal healing and treating to this target is associated with improved clinical outcomes, which formed the premise of our study. Our aim was to systematically review and perform a meta-analysis of studies comparing the long-term outcomes of patients who achieve mucosal healing compared to those who do not. We performed a systematic search of three large databases, PubMed, Embase, and Cochrane Library, to identify prospective studies which included patients with both active endoscopic and clinical disease at the outset of the study. These studies could have been observational or interventional, so long as the cohorts were obtained prospectively to limit bias. Additional inclusion criteria were an established diagnosis of UC by standard criteria active endoscopic and clinical disease at the start of the study, no prior colectomy, and a clear definition of mucosal healing, which we defined as MH. The study also needed to include at least one endoscopic assessment mm -hmm. between one and six months after initiation of UC therapy, which we defined as MH1. Follow-up clinical or endoscopic data needed to be available at least one year from the start of the study. We excluded pediatric studies and also studies where the diagnosis of UC wasn't clear. Our primary outcome was clinical remission at at least one year and at a time point that was at least six months after their first endoscopic assessment for MH, MH1. Um, and again, this was after UC therapy. We defined this primary outcome as long-term clinical remission. Our secondary outcomes were colectomy-free rate, corticosteroid-free clinical remission rate, and MH rate at least one year. And again, this was all six months after their first MH assessment. We captured the number of patients in each study who had had an endoscopic assessment between the one and six month period with outcomes stratified according to their MH status at that time point. If a study had insufficient data, we contacted the corresponding authors. From our search, we identified 4,396 studies, over 2,000 of which were duplicates, which we excluded. After applying our inclusion and exclusion criteria, we had 45 studies, which we reviewed in depth, and ultimately included 13 of these, with over 2,000 patients. 11 of these studies were high-quality, non-randomized controlled studies, and the other two were randomized controlled studies. We included an in-depth breakdown of each of these studies in our actual manuscript. Some of the salient points, though, are that the majority of patients included um, were, had moderate to severe UC, with seven studies including patients treated with biologics. Eight studies had follow-up um, for over two years, and the majority of studies defined MH as Mayo 0 or 1, with only two studies defining MH as endoscopic score of 0. In terms of the primary outcome, we found that achieving MH1 was associated with a pooled odds ratio of 4.50 for clinical remission at one year compared to patients who did not achieve MH1. This was based on 11 studies with over 1,300 patients. We also found that MH1 was associated with a significantly higher pooled odds ratio of 4.15 and 8.4 respectively for being colectomy free at one year and for having MH at one year compared to those patients who did not achieve mucosal healing at their first endoscopic assessment. There was a trend towards a higher pooled odds ratio for being corticosteroid free um, and in clinical remission at one year in those achieving mucosal healing, but again, this did not reach statistical significance. This is most likely because this outcome um, was only included in three studies. Additionally, we found that these improved outcomes held irrespective of whether mucosal healing was achieved on biologic or non-biologic therapy. We were ultimately unable to assess the impact of achieving mucosal healing defined as Mayo 0 compared to Mayo 1 
since only one study stratified outcomes between the two. In summary, our meta-analysis of 13 prospective trials with over 2,000 UC patients with active disease clearly show that achieving MH1 is associated with improved outcomes at at least one year and beyond, including higher rates of clinical remission, colectomy avoidance, sustained mucosal healing, and likely corticosteroid-free clinical remission. Treating towards mucosal healing, in addition to symptom improvement, is therefore reasonable and should be the goal of UC therapy since it is associated with improved disease course and prognosis. There are several strengths of our study, including our extensive literature search and ability to include outcomes on over 2,000 active patients. Also, this population includes hospitalized and ambulatory patients with varying severities of disease who achieve mucosal healing on both non-biologic and biologic modalities making our findings generalizable. That said, there are certainly limitations, with the main one being the heterogeneity in the definition of mucosal healing and also the endoscopic scoring indices used in each study. While the majority of studies grouped Mayo 0 and 1 together as mucosal healing, they may in fact be associated with distinct outcomes. Also, no study specifically targeted MH as a primary outcome. As we await well-designed prospective clinical trials, achieving mucosal healing in addition to clinical remission should be the goal of UC therapy. Whether this treat-to-target strategy alters the natural disease course of ulcerative colitis and is therefore favorable from a risk versus benefit and cost-effective standpoint remains to be evaluated.